What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I've got another massive iPhone 8 leaks and features video for you. Just a few days after the last one, but there are more and more details being uncovered about the iPhone 8. So after we've learned so much about it, basically confirmed by Apple the design and many features, there's more that I wanted to add to that list. So let's go ahead and begin. There's so much to talk about. Beginning with the display, the iPhone 8 actual display assembly has leaked. And of course, they have to be incredibly blurry and hard to detail images, but uh, we can ascertain a couple things from this display assembly. For one, yes, it is black. There is no white version as it was rumored that one is not going to be happening. But on the back, if you actually look at the bottom of that display assembly, there are connectors down there, which is interesting because if you've ever taken apart an iPhone, you know that those connectors are usually on the top of the display assembly. So Apple is migrating everything to the bottom, basically the connector area instead of the very top. So this also ties in with the next one, which is the X-ray of the iPhone 8 has officially leaked as well. In a validation test by an insider codenamed Ferrari, they have the actual x-ray of the internals of the iPhone 8, and it actually confirms several things. So they were right about that L-shaped battery. You can see that giant L shape there in the middle, and in the upper right-hand corner, there is a stacked logic board. This was also rumored long, long ago in the very beginning of the year. Basically, Apple's taking the usual logic board, stacking it to conserve space and add a bigger battery. Also, there is that wireless charging pad in the very same shape that we actually rendered a while ago. Also, the dual lens camera that is now vertically stacked is also confirmed in there as well. One other little detail I noticed is that the Taptic engine on the bottom left is bigger. So bigger than the iPhone 7s even, which was bigger than the iPhone 6s, and that one was bigger than the iPhone 6s. Basically, to replace the home button, I think Apple is going to go all out on the Taptic engine, make it very powerful to keep that physical feeling sort of somewhat there. And going way back to December, Ferrari, this code name for the iPhone 8 was actually predicted long, long ago, as well as the D22 code name we learned about in the last video I talked to you guys about this in. So the D22 and Ferrari code names are referring to the iPhone 8, and they've been around for quite some time. So many of the rumors that Ming Chi Ko predicted are still happening even half a year later plus. And we may actually have our very first physical look at the iPhone 7S. We've seen so much about the iPhone 8 that people kind of forget and put it in the back that the 7S is even happening, but this mock-up actually shows us what that could look like. And it is in a white color with sort of a goldish band, silverish band around the edges. Looks kind of interesting. So the back is glass on this mock-up, which ties in with the rumors coming from several sources saying that all three iPhone models will be getting wireless charging this year. So the 7S, even the iPhone 7S Plus, and the iPhone 8 will all be getting wireless charging if true. Either way, it looks pretty much the same as the iPhone 7 Plus, although I do like the glass back. I don't know about those mirrored borders though. And in the same vein, another iPhone 8 mock-up has surfaced, this time in a brown gold color we haven't seen before. Highly doubt that this is going to be a legitimate color, but I just thought that was interesting to share with you. A different color for the iPhone 8 mock-up, otherwise everything we've already seen and know about this design. So this week, Ming Chi Ko did detail a new report, and unfortunately, it has some very bad news. Touch ID that's going to be embedded inside of the display of the iPhone 8 is officially canceled, nixed, dead at Apple. He says they don't know exactly what was the nail in the coffin for this feature being axed, but we will not be getting Touch ID embedded in the display of the iPhone 8. Could be because the lack of time, the hardware issues, even if they figured out the hardware issues, it could have been a manufacturing issue on a large scale. So they just couldn't get it in time. And likely he said it's predicted that the Galaxy Note 9 will be the first device that will incorporate this technology on a mass scale. Even the Galaxy S9 won't have it because they won't need to compete with the iPhone since it won't have it either. The actual fate of Touch ID though is uncertain. There's still hints of it in the code, in the HomePod firmware that was leaked. No one really knows where it's going, what's going on with it. So that's gonna be a mystery, but them axing it from beneath the display might actually add more credibility to Face ID completely replacing Touch ID in iOS 11. And new code actually found in the HomePod firmware by a completely different source has revealed that this could be possible. A different developer found references to Pearl ID or otherwise known as Face ID, the facial recognition system for the iPhone 8 in areas with payment verification data. And this was actually confirmed by the original developer who found a lot of the other code. He said that it is official that Face ID will be compatible with Apple Pay, meaning it could be a feasible replacement to Touch ID, especially since there are more points of data scanning your face with a 3D modeling camera. It could be even more secure than Touch ID. The convenience factor though is left to be questioned. 
question. You know, is it going to be more convenient than Touch ID? Is it going to be a hassle picking your phone up, having to scan your face every single time instead of just using your finger without looking at it? And a Brazilian site, I help BR, has actually made an astounding discovery. When I heard about this, I was shocked. How is it possible? But the iPhone 8 may be capable of 4K 60 frames per second video recording. But not only on the rear camera, on the front one as well. My Panasonic GH5, which I'm filming with, can handle this sort of video capability. And it's crazy because when it first came out, no one really knew how Panasonic did it. No one else offers this in a camera of this price, yet they did it. And it's amazing. I don't use it on my channel because it just takes up uh, too much time editing with this video format and uploading it takes a lot longer on my internet speed. But uh, it definitely could be something more viable in the future. But the fact that Apple is adding it right now to the iPhone 8 is incredible. So that was found by I help BR in the code, the HomePod code. It just keeps giving more and more and more features of the iPhone 8 away. And there's actually an incredible new feature discovered in the HomePod firmware, again referring to the iPhone 8. This time it's called the smart camera. It can detect items, scenes, weather, things such as pets, babies, fireworks, snow, uh, water, sports, just all of these things happening. It can detect and as a result it can automatically adjust your exposure, your shutter speed, and many other factors of your camera to give you the perfect picture. And one developer seems to think that this will be handled by the Apple Neural Engine, which is that dedicated chip Apple will have for all artificial intelligence tasks. And it doesn't end there. There's another feature called Freeze Motion, which in motion picture capture could actually choose the best picture and keep it all without you having to do the individual choosing. And we talked about this in my video yesterday. The Siri Orb in iOS 11, when you activate it, that perfect circle, could actually replace the virtual home button on the iPhone 8 when active. Activated. At least this developer seems to think so. I think that would be really cool. There's a reason why it's perfectly circular and the same size as a home button right now. I think those are meant to be. And John Gruber actually spoke on how the HomePod firmware leak happened. Because a lot of the employees from Apple are getting HomePods to test at home. They usually get products to test early. And it was an over-the-air software update that they were set to receive once they got their HomePods in their house, you know, to ensure stability and features and all that. Now, it was never meant to go public Public, yet they shared it over a public stream. So that gave all of the developers access to it, which is where it came from. And over the air software updates are not encrypted with Apple. So that means that they had access to all the file system, all of the glyphs, and converting those glyphs into a viewable image actually required another tool from a separate source. So combining all of these factors into one, this was a crazy mess up on Apple's part, but for us, it gave us the iPhone 8's true design. Now there's a lot of debate going on right now about the true resolution of the iPhone 8. John Gruber actually wrote a long, long article about why he thinks Ming Chi Ko is wrong about the resolution he predicted for the iPhone 8, and he adjusted it accordingly to a slightly lower resolution and lower PPI. So Ming Chi Ko actually predicted 2800 by 1242 pixels with a 521 pixel density. Now John Gruber adjusted that to 2436 by 1125 with a 462 pixels per inch. It'll still be a very capable display, but it won't be as sharp as earlier predicted. He gave a really long reason as to why that is. And there were some crazy theories that uh, Apple might even release two sizes of the iPhone 8 just because there's such a discrepancy between the math and the sizing that no one can really figure it out for sure. But John Gruber seems to think that that will be the true resolution of the iPhone 8. So we talk a lot about the iPhone 8's leaks and rumors and design, but not about how it may actually work with this weird shaped display on iOS 11. Now there are several concepts I would love to share with you starting with Alan Pikes. He explores the navigation buttons on iOS 11, how it would work. Previously, Apple has them up on top. You have to reach all the way up here to go back, go forward, edit options, stuff like that. Now he envisions a concept where all of those buttons are moved down into the function area, placing them right in the palm of your hand so you don't have to stretch all the way up here to click those buttons. And it actually gives you more room for your content up top, which is awesome. He says the reason why iOS 11 has so much space in the top is exactly for the iPhone 8, while all other devices suffer as a result. He even guesses that Apple would put the time down below in the function area, possibly in the home button. I don't know how feasible that is, but it could be, could very well be in the function area. And another concept by Max Rudberg envisions how the status bar will work on the iPhone 8. So there are several things that Apple could do. First off, Apple could fully illuminate it, you know, have the cutout embraced by iOS 11, or they could hide it with a black, true black bar, as OLED is capable of doing that. It can perfectly blend it with the sensor bar up top, so there are a couple concepts of how that could work. 
also the bottom function bar. They could again blend it black with the borders or they could embrace the full screen display and make it look really, really long. Either way, it'll look good, but personally, he seems to think that Apple should embrace the cutouts up top and on the bottom and just give you the full display to work with. Either way, I think it'll look really cool. And by far, the best iOS concept I've ever seen running on an iPhone 8 by Prince Studio. He actually shared this with me. I was so impressed. I would love to share this with you. This envisions an iPhone 8 running iOS 12, but it looks like iOS 11 functionality-wise. I think this is what iOS 11 on the iPhone 8 could look like, but by him, he calls it iOS. 12. So what it could look like running in almost every single area on the iPhone. There's a dark mode, which looks incredible. There's camera controls in camera. There's multitasking, a completely different version of it, specifically for the iPhone 8. He envisions that the function bar will be blended with the bottom of the phone, as well as the status bar up top. So it does crop your content just a little bit. It doesn't give you the full screen picture, but still better than the iPhone 7 currently. It looks fantastic, guys. Please check it out down below in the description. I will link you to his stuff. I was just stunned by the quality of this work. Now, Bloomberg just released a new report saying that the Apple Watch 3 will receive LTE capability, making it more of a standalone device from the iPhone 8. So this will be available alongside the iPhone 8, they say. But just like GPS gave it more functionality for the Apple Watch 2, LTE will further remove that reliance on the iPhone 8 and be more of a standalone product, they say. That definitely will help with sales, they said. Also, going off that report, John Gruber actually piggybacked on that and said that a familiar source, a birdie told him that the Apple Watch 3 will have an all new design, all new form factor, he says. What this could be squared, uh, more circular, we don't really know, but one thing's for sure, it's probably gonna be very capable of a device. He also said, don't get your hopes up too high as it's a birdie that's not too reliable in the past. But both do seem to agree that Apple Watch 3 will be shipping with the iPhone 8 later this year. So guys, there it is, the latest on the iPhone 8, all the latest leaks and rumors. It's just amazing how much is happening, how much we're learning before the release. Is there anything gonna be left to the imagination? I don't know. Either way, I have fun reading about these rumors, sharing them with you, learning so much about the iPhone 8 before it even comes out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's the latest leaks and rumors on the iPhone 8. Peace.